Hey, Maples family, welcome back to the evening devotions. Um, I want to say a special thank you to Joey and uh, the Brennan, Joey Brennan team that put together our devotions during Advent. They did a great job. Hope you all enjoyed those. Uh, so for the next few weeks, though, we'll be back uh, to live with me um, and Sam. Uh, we'll be splitting the chores. Hey, Robert, Toby, good to see you there, bud. Um, we're really good to have, it's glad to have y'all here tuning in. Thanks for tuning in each week uh, during Advent. Um, this week we're going to pick, hey Mary, how are you? Um, we're going to pick right back up with um, what I like to call is debriefing the sermon. Um, I like to take the amount of material that I had prepared and break it down a little bit more for y'all. Um, for each sermon that's about 20 to 25 minutes, I've done generally about 20 to 25 hours of prep for each sermon of things I've read, notated, studied, thought about. Each, really each week, um, the sermon is about an extra 20, 25 hours of the week um, put on preparing for it. So I have this massive amount of material and I can only preach about that much. So um, during the week, y'all get a good taste of that. So we're going to look at the scripture from Sunday, and then we're going to dig a little deeper on that tonight. All right, so we're looking at Matthew chapter 2, verses 1, all the way through verse um, 15. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. And when Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And gathering together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. Then they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the leaders of Judah. For from you will come forth a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and determined from them the exact time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child, and when you have found him, report to me, so that I too may come and worship him. After hearing the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went on ahead of them until it came to a stop over the place where the child was to be found. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And after they came into the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary. And they fell down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented to him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And after being warned by God in a dream not to return to Herod, the Magi left. For their own country by another way. Now when they had gone, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt, and stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So Joseph got up, took the child and his mother while it was still night, and left for Egypt. And he stayed there until the death of Herod. This happened so that what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophets would be fulfilled. Out of Egypt, I called my son. And if you read on through, it's very interesting. It's kind of really tragic. But if you read on through that, it says, Then when Herod saw that he had been tricked by the Magi, he became very enraged and sent men and killed all the boys who were in Bethlehem and all its vicinity, who were two years old or under according to the time which he had determined from the Magi, meaning the time when the child would have been born. Then what had been spoken through Jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled. A voice was heard in Ramah, weeping in great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and she refused to be comforted because they were no more. For when Herod died, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up and take the child and his mother and go into the land of Israel, for those who sought the child's life are dead. So Joseph got up, Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judea in place of his father Herod, father Herod, 
he was afraid to go there. Then after being warned by God in a dream, he left for the region of Galilee. He came and settled in a city called Nazareth. And this happened. So what was spoken through the prophets will be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. Now this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So let's talk a little bit about the history of uh, these wise men, um, the, the history of their journeys, um, who we think they may be and who we think they may not be. So magi as a term, pull that up, um, magi as a term means, um, got to get it, oh, come on, come on, come on, my internet is slow today, hold on just a second, all right, so magi literally from the um, Encyclopedia Britannica means magus, magus also known as wise men, um, and they were noble, pil noble pilgrims from the east, and they followed the star to Jerusalem. So um, they were not Jews in all likelihood. Um, they were very likely uh, pagans, uh, maybe from multiple different tribes, um, but they would have been wise maybe students of um, of the stars um, astronomers scientists perhaps alchemists uh, you know those crazy guys that wanted to try to turn lead into gold um, which really were the first scientists the first people trying to figure out uh, chemistry um, so the first question is were there three well we don't know we're not given in scripture the names or the number of the magi there are multiple traditions we assume and we sing we three kings we talk about the three wise men because there were three gifts gold frankincense and myrrh and so we assume one gift per wise man but in the east there is a tradition that there were 12 wise men um, in the eastern part of the roman empire in the in, in the Eastern Church, the Eastern Orthodox Church, and the church that was, you know, you know, when Rome split into the Roman Empire and then the Eastern Empire, and Rome fell, uh, the Byzantine Empire survived, and the church that was centered in the Byzantine Empire would, would now become, today, the Orthodox Church. And so, in that sense, there was 12, but in our Western tradition, there was three, and it's all presented in that manner of the gifts. Um, how long have they been traveling? How long? I mean, you can get from Jerusalem to Tehran, Iran. So let's say that they were Persians. Uh, you can get there by air flight in a couple of hours. You can get there on the road in a day. Um, but you can, how long does it take on a camel? Well, we don't know. We don't know how long they traveled. We don't know if they were from Persia or if they were from much further away. Were they from in, you know, down in the um, Arabian Peninsula? Uh, were they from the steppes of Russia? Were they from China? We don't know. Were they from India? Were they, were they from the ancient Indus Valley civilization? Um, where all of our modern languages, really, and most of our modern culture arose, uh, the Indo-European languages and the Indo-European Indo cultures. We don't know. What we do know is that from the arrival of the star to Herod's attempt on Jesus' life was likely two years. From the birth of until Herod's attempt on his life was likely two years. That means that G, the star that announced his birth, it took two years for Herod to be comfortable, saying, "This is, you know, this is where I need to do." And he he didn't even really understand it. It, it seems uh, that the the time frame is fairly short 
from the arrival of the wise men until they get to Bethlehem um, to find Jesus. And we don't know how long they tarried there in Jerusalem before they went there. Um, or did Herod, you know, kind of delay them? We don't know. It doesn't seem like it was an incredibly long period of time. We do know that they had been traveling long enough that it probably was a year or two. Um, and that Jesus would not have been in the stable um, when uh, they arrived because it says that they found him in the house. And we know that they left and went home another way and, and Joseph was warned in the dream and Herod killed every child under the age of two. And there was a reason for that. Now, could he have said, oh, they, they told me a year and I'm just going to be extra careful and go two? Well, quite possibly. But we know that it was more than just a moment. So, um, know that they were probably um, students of the stars. Uh, because they were able to accurately foresee the coming of this star, and they were able to accurately talk about um, this alignment and the meanings of this alignment. And if you really dig into the the Bethlehem star, there's there are some conjunctions in the in the um, in the in the heavens, and they point to a couple of things. They, you know, we can spin everything backwards, basically and understand where everything was at certain times. And there was a conjunction um, of certain planets, and it, if you interpret them in the manner that they would have interpreted them in that day, it would have said it would have signified the birth of a king, but not just a king, but a king of all kings, a king above all kings, like a super king. And then the second one was there was also the, the sign in the, in the heavens that portended the priest above all priests. It was a double sign. Um, it was significant for them. And it was enough for them. Let's put it like this. It was enough for them that they packed up and they headed to Jerusalem. They came towards Bethlehem and they followed the star. Followed the star. So there may have been more than just the conjunction. And in all likelihood, there was. <laughs> now, so you ask this question. They followed the star, maybe for a year or two. They were searching it out. But how did they know about all of the history? And in all likelihood, they probably have read the Septuagint, the Hebrew Scriptures. There were probably Jews that they were exposed to. Perhaps one of them was a Jew living in the diaspora, living outside of Jerusalem, living outside of the kingdom, outside of his people. Um, we know that at one point in time, the largest extra, um, the largest Jewish population in the world outside of Israel proper was in Iran, in the Persian area, and in the Persian Empire. We know that that is the case, and it has been there for a very long time. Because it was in Persia, it was in Persia that we see that for such a time as this, that Mordecai uh, lifts up to Queen Esther. Queen Esther, Queen of Persia, married to a Persian king. There was a significant uh, Jewish population for thousands of years in the modern day Iran or what was known as Persia. So there was a strong likelihood they would have come in contact with him, with one of these guys, with a, with a Jewish person, knew Jews, maybe worked with them, maybe was one, and then would have come in contact with the scriptures. Were they believers? Were they Christians? No. Christ was an infant. was a child. I had... Did they become Christians? We don't know. If the story's not told, we don't know what happens to them. But I know they had a face to face encounter with the living Lord. And that God spoke to them in dreams. That means the Holy Spirit was at work in their lives. And I think that is quite remarkable. 
What it tells me is that even for me and you, even when we feel like that we're pagans and soothsayers and not so worthy of his love, that God's Holy Spirit is at work in our lives. Why? Because he loves us. And he is always faithful. So the wise men give me hope. Very unlikely, unlikely heroes. But the Bible calls them wise, magi, wise men. Mages, magus, a very different kind of person than we would expect. But we kind of see that all through Jesus' life, right? At his birth, shepherds, sleeping on the hay of a manger. Yeah. All throughout Jesus' life. He associated with people that shocked the world. Not even shock you and me. He was attended by folks that were outside the norm. He turned everything on its head. While at the same time preserving absolutely the truth of God's word. And proving its eternality meaning it was the same yesterday, today, and forever. I hope as I age that I become more wise than intelligent. I hope I become more deeply connected to the Spirit and smart in the ways of the world or in the ways of the Lord. Intelligence is a good thing, but wisdom is far greater. Lord, make me wise in your eyes. I may see the world with fresh eyes and send your Holy Spirit to minister to me so that I might minister to the world. That's my prayer for us and for us going into 2021. 2021. Isn't that nice to say? It's 2021. My hopes for you is that this year we'll see God's light shine in your life in new ways and that you will become a beacon for all around you, drawing them closer to the Lord as we go into the world, making disciples of all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them all that he has taught us. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Y'all have a great evening. I'll see you right back here tomorrow night at 6 o'clock where we will pick up and take, and take a look back at the same scripture. But we're going to be looking tomorrow night at the three gifts and we're going to be digging into them even more and we're going to pick up multiple places where we will see them elsewhere in scriptures and what they mean and the symbolism and the importance of them. Um, I'm a big Star Wars fan. I love watching Star Wars. There's a lot of Eastern mysticism that I don't agree with. There's a lot of stuff in there that are it's not right. It's theologically wrong. It's a great storytelling. I, I think they do a good job of storytelling. Um, but there's a lot of stuff in there I don't agree with. But what I like is what George Lucas said about the different ver the different tree uh, um, you know the three movies put together the sequel the trilogies and what he said was that they don't repeat like they don't you don't write one and it just completely mimics the other ones but it does rhyme and I think that's true in scriptures I think that oftentimes it is not identical, but oftentimes it rhymes. And so we will see frankincense, and we will see myrrh, and we will see gold over and over throughout Scripture. And it has distinctive meanings where it shows up. I think um, we can learn a lot from looking at those three gifts. So join me tomorrow night as we dive into the three gifts even deeper. Go back and read that passage. Maybe bone up a little bit on it. See if you want to 
look for other places you will find myrrh. Um, you might also hear the word nard, pure nard. Uh, if you want to look that up in like a concordance, you might find that there as well. Um, that's a little hint for tomorrow night. So I hope to see you there. Hope you have a great evening. Know God loves you, and so do we here at Maples. Invite somebody else tomorrow night. Send this uh, Bible study devotion to them. Uh, things are looking up. Have a great evening.